chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again in today's lecture we learn about polynomial division polynomial division and we will also learn about remainder theorem in all the competitive exams there are always questions that are based on the remainder theorem but in this lecture we will be discussing entirely the conceptual part so that the fundamentals are first of all cleared we'll start with polynomial division let us recall remember how we divide two numbers if you see the case of 152 being divided by 6 then how do we divide we first of all try to annul the highest number that can be formed out of 152 this one we didn't stop at 1 because 1 was less than 6 then we looked up for 5 when we obtained the highest pair 15 which was greater than 6 then we find a multiplier 6 to 12 and you are left with 3 then we bring that 2 down because 3 was less than 6 we brought another 2 from the top now 32 becomes more than 6 and since it is more than 6 we find another multiplier 30 and we had to stop at 2 because 2 is now less than 6 so what is the purpose or end objective of division during division we continue to break the original number till we are left with something that is smaller than the divisor this is called the divisor d i v i s o r this 152 is called the dividend this is called the quotient and this is called the remainder so i repeat what is the purpose of division in numbers it is about breaking the dividend and breaking the dividend to such a point where it cannot be further broken and the remainder comes to less than the divisor so if you have never observed then this was always true ever since your childhood that remainder is always less than the divisor in all the sums you have done till today this is always true in fact there is no big big uh, rule in this you can in fact see here also if instead of 2 here was 20 then 20 would be more than 6 and then we would continue with the division so basically the division stops at a point when this number is getting smaller than the divisor so this is the end point of the division in case of numbers so we can write a summary division is breaking the divide dividend down to a down to a remainder remainder that is less than the divisor this is what is the definition of division when we came to when we were performing for the case of numbers in fact it is possible to divide two polynomials also and the definition of the division remains the same in that case also in that case also we have to break down the dividend to a remainder that is less than the divisor 
This is the total objective of division in case of polynomials also. Let us now study a few examples where we are dividing two polynomials. Suppose we have to divide this polynomial 3x square plus x minus 1 by x plus 1. Suppose we have to do this division. Now the first step is to arrange the terms of the dividend the terms of the dividend dividend in decreasing order in decreasing order of degrees so i hope you know what is a degree so see in this case we will arrange this 3x square plus x minus 1 in a decreasing order in fact it is already in the decreasing order so had it been something like x plus 3x square minus 1 then we would have written it like this 3x square plus x minus 1 the degree of this term is 2 the power of 2 the degree of this term is 1 and this dividend has been arranged in a decreasing order of the degrees next we put it under the division and write x plus 1 on this side so as per our terminology this x plus 1 is the divisor is the divisor this is the dividend quotient will come somewhere here and remainder will follow at the bottom now this 3x square plus x minus 1 is considered greater than x plus 1 because the degree of this entire is 2 and the degree of this is 1. So anything, any polynomial with a greater degree is considered greater than another polynomial of lesser degree. Now in this case 3x square is greater than x plus 1. So remember in the earlier case, in case of 152, when we were dividing it by 6, we were trying to find out the greater combination. In this case, 3x square has a degree 2 and x plus 1 has a degree 1. So 3x square plus 3x square is in any case greater than x plus 1. Now we have to find such a polynomial so that 3x square is broken down and is removed out because our ultimate objective is to break down this polynomial to lower and lower lower and lower polynomials just like we were breaking down 152 to lower and lower numbers now what is it we we can observe that we'll write minus 3x here sorry plus 3x here plus 3x into x will be 3x square and this 3x will be multiplied with x also so I'll, I'll have to put this 3x also because I can't ignore this one so we get 3x square plus 3x our i is only on 3x square we obtained 3x by observation so that 3x into x is 3x square and now we change the signs because we are going to subtract this so what will be the result 3x square minus 3x square will cancel out this is plus and this is minus x minus 3x will lead me to minus 2x because this is minus and greater so minus 2x and now we'll bring that minus 1 down just like we would bring this 2 down when we are doing the case of number division now we have to now take care of this 2x if we multiply x by minus 2 what will I get? I'll get minus 2x minus 2 because this 2 is multiplied by 1 it gives me minus 2 2 multiplied by x gives me minus 2x and now what we'll get is change the signs because this has to be subtracted don't forget this change of signs this will vanish and plus 2 minus 1 will leave me 1 here at this point now since degree of this 1 is less than the degree of this divisor we cannot go with go with any further with the division 
we'll have to stop at this point and one will be called the remainder. We will not be able to go any ahead. We do not have to in fact because the remainder has been reduced to a degree lesser than the degree of the divisor. This is the end result, the quotient and this is the divisor. So this is what is our whole setup about the division. I'll take up one more example so that you understand the whole idea and then after that I'll move on to my summary points. Our next example is divide divide x cube plus 1 by x plus 1. This is the division that we have to continue. Now you will be able to understand what I mean by division. I have given already one example and now I am taking another example. I am not taking very simple examples because complicated examples will help you raise your level also. So let us see how to divide this one. We will first of all put it in the decreasing order. So according to that it should be x cube plus 0x square plus 0x plus 1. This is the full polynomial. 0 means that is nothing so we have basically just put it in a formal way. Divide it by x plus 1. This is the highest term. We have to crush it. So we will obviously by observation see that we can write x square here. When x square is multiplied by x I get x cube. When x square is multiplied by 1 then I get x square. So this is plus x square. This is what I get to my point. x plus 1 multiplied by x square multiplied by this one is x cube multiplied by this one is plus x square and this is what I have placed at this point. Now this has to be subtracted from the upper one. I will write minus here and minus here. This minus means that I am changing the signs for my rough work. This x cube and this x cube will cancel away. This is 0 x square. This is minus x square. So 0 x square minus x square will be minus x square only. So I will write it as minus x square at this point. I will bring that down also so that division is easier for me in my next step. Now x will be multiplied by what? I will have to take care of this one. I will therefore find minus x here because minus x multiplied by x will be minus x square and minus x multiplied by plus 1 will be minus x and draw a line here. Now since this has to be subtracted from this one, I will just change the signs for my rough work here only. So x square minus x square will vanish and x x plus 0x will be x only. So I will put plus 1, bring that one down. So right now I have this one. Next I will now find out, I will not think about this one because the degree, this can't be remainder so far because the degree of this is still not less than the degree of this one. The degrees are same. So now I will find some number so that x and this x they work out. So obviously it will be plus 1. 1 into x will give me 1. This 1 into this 1 will give me plus 1. So this is what I have. And next now what I have to do is subtract it out, subtract it out. So this x will vanish, this 1 also vanishes and I am left with 0. So we can see that x plus 1, x cube plus 1 is completely divisible by x plus 1. Next let us move on to a relationship between I will write here relation between relation between divisor dividend remainder and quotient. There is a mathematical relation between them. I will just write it for you so that you can appreciate and develop your concepts before I go for the polynomials, let me again visit our number. 
this is 152 we were dividing it by 6 so quickly i'll write it 6 2 is 12 3 2 6 5 32 okay in case of numbers we know that 152 can be written as 6 multiplied by 25 plus 2 this is always so you can in fact verify it also 25 into 6 will be 150 and this will be 2 and 152 will balance out take another example let us divide 4 by 3 what do we get 3 1 3 and balance is 3 remainder is 3 in this case also we can write 4 is equal to this 3 multiplied by this 1 add the remainder 4 is 3 cross of these two and then the remainder added so we have observed in fact which was always true is that the dividend is always equal to the product of the divisor and quotient and then to this you add the remainder if we uh, if we see that this dividend is the number that is being divided it is equal to divisor 6 multiplied by 25 and to that you add the remainder so this relation we have always uh, seen in case of our elementary classes in case of numbers or if you were never aware then you can cross check with a number of examples by dividing yourself you will find that this relationship is a standard is a universal relationship the same relationship holds in case of polynomials also so in our first example we were dividing 3x square plus x minus 1 by x plus 1 and what we obtained on the right side we had obtained 3x minus 2 and the result of this it left 1 with us I haven't written all those steps because these steps were already explained at the beginning of this lecture now let us see what is in the case of polynomials see this is the dividend 3x square plus x minus 1 is equal to divisor is x plus 1 multiplied by 3x minus 2 which is the quotient and plus 1 if you simplify it you will see that the two sides balance again this means that dividend is divisor into quotient plus remainder this relationship is also true in the case of polynomials if you want me to verify it i'll prove it also check it out multiply x by 3x you get 3x square x by minus 2 you get minus 2x then 1 is crossed with 3x you get 3x 1 is crossed with minus 2 you get minus 2 this plus 1 is already there so this is 3x square plus x this is minus 2 and 1 will make it minus 1 so these two sides they balance out so in most general terms let us see how we can express it suppose this is a polynomial px you know we we uh, in our last lecture we told how we can abbreviate a longer polynomial by this notation so i am not writing a long polynomial i am just writing a symbolic polynomial let a polynomial be px and if this polynomial is divided by gx and the result of the division it leaves me a polynomial called rx and the divisor and the quotient is qx this is a division diagram which we, which we have already seen in the two examples and this is what we can represent the whole process of division there is nothing big mathematics about it it is only in symbolic form so if this is what is so then the equation we know is what px the dividend is equal to the divisor multiplied by the quotient and to that you add the remainder and in this case the degree of rx will be less than 
द डिग्री ऑफ जी एक्स दिस वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्ट्रेस्ड दैट द रिमेंडर इज ऑफ डिग्री लेस देन द डिग्री ऑफ द जी एक्स सो दिस इज वन रिलेशनशिप दैट यू कैन सी देर इज नो बिग मैथमेटिक्स इन्वॉल्व इन दिस इट इज सिंपली एन एक्सप्रेशन ऑफ द डिविजन वॉट डिविजन मीन्स पी एक्स इज क्यू एक्स इंटू जी एक्स प्लस आर एक्स एंड एट द सेम टाइम डिग्री ऑफ आर एक्स विल बी लेस देन द डिग्री ऑफ जी एक्स सो दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ द डिविजन ऑफ पॉलिनोमियल्स ऑफ डिविजन ऑफ पॉलिनोमियल्स Let me next come to our remainder theorem. Now you will be able to understand the remainder theorem better. Remainder theorem. I'll first of all write what remainder theorem is. If the divisor divisor is of the form x minus a, that is, it is a linear polynomial. so this is of degree 1 so it is called a linear polynomial if the divisor is a linear polynomial so it holds only in the case of a linear polynomial remainder theorem applies only when the divisor is a linear polynomial in that case we write px is equal to x minus a multiplied by qx plus the remainder rx if we write it in that symbolic form then it will be like this x minus a and this will be qx and after some steps we are left with the remainder rx so this is what we put in a symbolic form nothing big mathematics about it px if uh, this remainder theorem will apply only in the special case where you are dividing one polynomial by another polynomial which is linear now in this case we'll make a few observations first of all degree of degree of qx sorry degree of px degree of px is more than or equal to 1 this is one observation why if degree of px has been had been less than 1 then division would not have been possible because then because you cannot divide for example you cannot divide 2 by 6 if px is of degree already less than the degree of the divisor then you cannot divide the division has no meaning so this is one simple very obvious observation that degree of px should be more than or equal to 1 okay this doesn't have much significance but it's just a common observation number 2 now what about the degree of rx what about the degree of rx now i think you can make it out rx has to be of lesser degree than x minus a we have been stressing this throughout and we also know that a polynomial always has a degree which is more than or equal to 0 0 1 2 3 so on so if x minus a has a degree of 1 then rx will be less than x minus a only if the degree of rx is equal to 0 so first conclusion which is of greater meaning i would say this is second conclusion rather this is the first conclusion the first conclusion which of is of meaning is that which is something of worth is that the degree of the remainder will always be a 0 so what does this mean this means that rx must be a number number only like 6 6 degree of 6 is 6x to the power 0 see the previous lectures or like 7 so rx must be a number this is one very important conclusion that if you divide a polynomial by a linear divisor then the remainder will always be a number this is one fact 
So if this is the fact, that means I can write Px equal to x minus a multiplied by Qx plus k, where k is some number not involving x. So about this I am very clear. This is my second conclusion written in a bit, bit symbolic form. Now, there is one bigger conclusion. I don't know whether you are seeing it or not. Now, if I put x equal to a on both the sides, if I write p a equal to, then this will be a minus a, this will be q a plus k because no x is in k, which implies p a is equal to k. Now, this is a very, very powerful fact. This says that the remainder can be found out by substituting a in the polynomial px. If px is let us say x4 plus 1 and it is divided by some polynomial like x minus 1, then a is 1 here. So the remainder would be p1 and which would be 2. Don't worry about this, I will take more examples. But the more stressful fact is, let me write all this now in a summarized form on my next page. Uh, you should remember this one also, take a note of this one also. But let me write it in a more clear form on the next page. When a polynomial px is divided by x minus a, the remainder is the remainder is p a. This is what is the crux of the whole exercise which we were doing on the last page. Some people also say it like this that the remainder is the remainder is the value of is the value of p at the zero of zero of the divisor. Now what is the zero of divisor x minus a? Check my last last video. The d zero is a only because x minus a will be zero when x is equal to a. So at the zero of x minus a, that is at a, the value of p, what is that? It is pa, one and the same thing what we have already said. Now for your curiosity, of course that's not very relevant, that the remainder theorem is not limited to, in reality it is not limited to polynomials of degree one. It holds for any polynomials of any degree. Provided, of course, their mutual relationships, they are compatible. So, in that case, this definition is more general. So, if, if the dividend had been, let us say, a, a quadratic expression x square plus bx or something, in that case, the zero of this, zero of this would give the remainder, uh, if we put p a on the same pattern like we were discussing, the zero of this, when the value of p at the zero of this will give the remainder when p is divided by this polynomial. Now this is not very important for you right now. Our cases have to be limited to the case of linear polynomials like this one. So we'll remember this one and based on this let me take a few examples. Find the remainder. Now this is of practical significance as far as your exams are concerned. Find the remainder when x raised to the power 4 plus x raised to the power 3 minus 2x square plus x plus 1 is divided is divided by x minus 1. One way is of course that you perform the long division and see what is left in the end. But we can make use of our remainder theorem and in objective type questions, such questions are always there. Let us see how we can make use of our remainder theorem. 
in this case our px is x raised to the power 4 plus x cube minus 2x square plus x plus 1. This is px. This px has to be divided by x minus 1. And we have to find out what is left here. Of course, it will be a number as per remainder theorem. And the value of that would be the value of p value of p at 0 of of x minus 1. So, 0 of x minus 1 is when x minus 1 is equal to 0, which implies x is equal to 1. So, remainder is remainder is p at 1. So, putting this 1, put x equal to 1 in equation 1, we get p1 as 1 raised to the power 4 plus 1 cube minus 2 1 square plus 1 plus 1. So, this you can add arithmetic 1 and 1, 2 cancel and 2. 2 is the answer in this case. So, you can see how I used remainder theorem to calculate the remainder very quickly. Before I close, let me take a one more example so that you understand the concepts very fully. The question is find the remainder, find the remainder remainder when x cube minus a x square plus 6 x minus a is divided by is divided by x minus a. Okay. Now straight away as step 1 find the 0 of divisor. So, what is the 0 of the divisor? Put x minus a equal to 0 which implies x is equal to a because we already know how to find the 0 of a polynomial. The 0 of a polynomial is the value at which the value of the polynomial becomes 0. Solving for x we get x is equal to a. We took a to the other side. Step 2 by remainder theorem, by remainder theorem, the remainder would be, the remainder would be value of p, px at the 0 in equation 1 above. So, this is what it is. So, p a is equal to because x is equal to a is the uh, uh, 0. So, p a is equal to put 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 a, a in this equation directly. So, c I am putting directly a cube minus a into a square plus 6 into a minus a. So, I put a cube a square 6a, it's all about evaluation. a cube, this will be minus a cube, this is 6a minus a. So, we can see that this one will cancel out and it will leave us 5a as the answer. So, you can appreciate that it doesn't take even 5 seconds to solve this question and expect these questions to be in your exam. I've seen last exam papers of SSE and all exams. These questions are invariably there.